Well, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. As you can see, we're uh, back in the office here this week after that little family excursion last week. And I thought uh, both Kimberly and Brian gave some really great information in our um, video from Dividend Cafe last week in my absence. This week, um, I have a few things I want to go over with you as we're kind of back into a little bit of this volatility that we've been forecasting would return to the market. And it's really important that I remind you that we have not been forecasting elevated volatility or extra normal volatility. We, we've just simply believed that the extremely, and I mean unbelievably suppressed volatility would somewhat dissipate. That the very low levels of market fluctuation we've been experiencing would have to kind of come off a little bit and we'd resume, resume a little bit of normalcy. We're still not back to average level volatility by any stretch, average uh, uh, periods of movement and so forth. But this week, as of Thursday night anyways, the market is up about 120 points on the week. And it did that um, the way it kind of used to a little more, more often than not. With a couple big up days and one big down day, there was one sort of flattish day. But um, the market was closed last Friday for Good Friday. So from where we closed on Thursday at the end of the day to where we are right now in four trading days, uh, there's been a lot of movement up and down and the market's up about 120 points from that. So one of the things we write about this week in DividendCafe.com, and this is kind of the big thing I want to get into in the video this week, is the source of it. I'm becoming really, really convinced that yes, of course, the, the expectations around tax reform from the Trump administration and those various growth-oriented political expectations and disappointments and, and all of that are still a big driver to markets. But really, I saw more this week than I've seen in quite some time of global conditions driving risk markets. China coming in at 6.9% real GDP growth uh, for Q1, when, when a lower figure than that was expected. But you, you still see the market taking P's and Q's from this kind of idea that maybe, just maybe, global growth is re-accelerating. It's really important I point out, even if that's true, and I tend to think right now it seems to be, but we are talking about nominal growth. The gap between nominal growth and real growth, meaning after inflation is subtracted, has become quite large. So I still think that in terms of the health and investability of those markets, the inflationary conditions are something to be watched. But to the extent that some degree of nominal growth reacceleration were in fact to, to surface, that the commodity price increases we've seen over the last year are foretelling some of that, I think it would represent a different catalyst and a, a justifiable one for market optimism and for some degree of a risk on paradigm in, in markets. Um, I also think that oil prices be, have become a rather simple bellwether for the market. The bigger days this week saw oil prices move higher. There was a bit of a sell-off behind some supply news and Saudi OPEC kind of disappointing report that came on uh, Wednesday, I believe. And so, so oil prices are still driving things. Now, look, this is not abnormal. The period where the only thing moving markets was what Trump was going to say and tweet and do and where the, it was Congress going to pass this or that, that was abnormal. I mean, you always have a U.S. political overtone to, to the stock market, to bond markets, um, and, and the, the U.S. political Washington, D.C. infrastructure kind of pushing out the Fed to some degree was somewhat overdue because the Fed had really dominated a lot of what was catalytic in markets for quite some time. But to now see other things like commodity prices, like the oil uh, movement, and, and like expectations around global growth, I think is probably a healthy issue that there isn't such a monolithic focus on what could be moving markets, that it's more diversified. So I think that's the big theme that we're seeing this week. And, and no matter what, the longer term driver of markets is still always in forever earnings. I say it over and over again. I'm more referring to what's kind of creating some of the short term movements. But from an earnings standpoint, it's still kind of early. We're exactly right now one week into the Q1 earnings season. A lot of financial companies have reported, but we don't have enough of a penetration into technology companies, consumer companies, industrials, 
to see how earnings season is going to play out. But so far, we like what we see, particularly some of the names we own have reported great numbers. I've been uh, back into the flow of quite a few analyst calls this week. And uh, nothing, it, uh, overall, I think earnings season is going to come in quite well. So that's going to drive markets. They're, you're still going to be dependent upon what they're going to get done with tax reform and Obamacare and all that. And then we look to China. We look to global growth. That's the lay of the land right now. Come back to you next week with more of an update. Don't forget, though, to go to DividendCafe.com to read the whole report, see some more charts. Uh, we have a podcast available if you're interested in taking it that way at iTunes and SoundCloud. And I'll be quiet now. Have a great weekend. Bye.